Let's take a look how we can drive morph targets from control rig controls in Unreal Engine 5.4. This is something that I've recently figured out and I thought, hey, this is awesome. I'll go and let you know how I did it and also my future self so that I don't forget. So this requires a skeletal mesh that already has morph targets that you can drive in the first place. So I've got my lovely assistant here, Miss Victoria9, to help me out. And on the right hand side, I've got some seams, and on the left hand side, I've got some, hey, nice, I can totally puppet her now. Isn't that cool? <laughs> on the left hand side, I've got some expressions here, like, you know, uh, happy, I guess, and um, something like, oh, that's, I'm not too happy about that. And, you know, very, very happy to see you all. So let's, let's see how we can do that. Let's create a new control rig for my girl in the first place. So we do that going onto the skeletal mesh, and then we right click, and then we say create control rig. That's not a modular control rig. That would be something else. We're going to just make a small control rig that we can go and layer on top of existing rig. So you can add this logic into an existing control rig if you like, but that's going to often turn a control rig, a single file into a huge monster. And with 5.4, we have this option to animate with layered control rigs. So you don't have to cram everything into one control rig. You can have multiple control rigs that each function as a small piece of the puzzle and then just layer them on top of one another. So this is one of those things that I'm going to do. So control rig, and that gives me this here. So I'm going to go and rename that into maybe V9 expression test, just so that we know what that is. Save, double click to open it, and then we get something like this. So this, if there's something in here already, which sometimes there might be if you're using the DAS to Unreal Bridge, then I would recommend you select everything in the control graph here and just delete everything and then just bring back the forwards control node here because that's the one we do need. And then we'll go over to the rig hierarchy here and close everything down. We don't want to attach anything to existing bones. We're going to make a new one. So make sure you don't select anything. Just click into here, right click and say new control. And that is going to be one for, let's call it smile. The first thing I want to do is change what this control is supposed to do. So by selecting it, I can see that on the right hand side here on the details, its value type is set to Euler transform or Euler transform, Euler, I think it's called Euler. And we want to change that because this is meant to be a bone control thing, or that's what it defaults to. We're going to go and change that to a float value. So that means it changes to a little draggable slider thing. And if you have a look under these values here, you can select multiple by going current, control, min, and max. I'm just going to go and hold these, select these three. You can see that as I drag this into the X direction, I get a value change. And this is what I'm going to exploit to drive my morph target. So that is how we get the value out. Let's go and quickly correct the position. I don't want that to be in the bottom here. So I'm going to go and choose to my offset here under transform my offset. I want to make the location a little bit higher, like 150, maybe 160, something like that. So in her head height, because it's a control relating to her head. And also it's a bit too far in the head. So I don't want to do that either. So let's go and move that over 30, 20, maybe on the X. And also it's a bit too long. So I want to scale this down. So that will be on the offset scale here. I'm going to go and make a uniform scale and maybe make that sort of, I don't know, 20% of this. So 0.2 and that will scale the whole thing down, including my control shape, but we can go and scale that up later. So that is what it looks like now. And that sort of performs quite well for what I'm trying to do here. Uh, on the bottom here, control shape, you can change that from the default sort of solid ball to something like, say it's solid arrow that is now pointing in the wrong direction. So let's make that a little bigger, maybe four times as big, and then also rotate that around the X by 90 degrees. Then we have something like this. So that's a nice little you know visual control here. I might even go and bring that sort of to 10 or maybe 15. There we go, a little bit closer. We can zoom in nicely. So that's our control setup. So now comes the mystery of how do we drive this thing? So that happens in the control graph here, in the rig VM graph. And you think we're going to go and grab this out and put it into here somehow, but that is not how it works. We're going to go and create a node manually by right-clicking and saying, get control float. 
So that gives us this, and that then has the float value that we want to exploit. We have to go and select our control manually, or if you're doing this in code, then you can also provide a named variable here. I'm going to go and change this to, well, new control. That wasn't, that wasn't great. Let me go and compile this. <laughs> then it knows that there is, in fact, a smile control here. Perfect. So that's what I want to take out. So the float value for my smile control. And I want to set this as a curve value. So I'll say set curve value, oops, curve. As we are familiar from these things in animation sequences, if you want to animate these things directly, then you would animate curves technically. And that is what we do here. The curve itself is the morph target you want to drive. So I'm going to go and choose smile. These are all my morph targets here. Smile, and then we hook that up. And that is essentially all we need to do. Now, when we drive this control, um, <clears throat> drive this control, then we see, oh, beautiful. This is, um, this is great. This is exactly the result I wanted to see. So it kind of works, but it doesn't work as expected. And the reason for that is that this float value gives me a value between zero and a hundred. And then I think after five, if you look closely at the current value here, after five, there's no exaggeration of the morph anymore. So after five, it just remains at that position. So I don't want it to be that high. I want it to be between one and between zero and one, basically, or something along those lines. So what I can do is there's multiple ways of doing it. Like so often in Unreal Engine, let me all select this to get rid of that and just divide the value that comes out of here by 100. And then we have the number we're looking for. So this now drives my morph slider much, much nicer. This is more kind of what I had expected. This is what I want here. So perfect. She, is, she can smile and I can drive it with a control. This is fantastic. So if we wanted to use this though in the sequence that we also have to provide a backwards solve for this, and that would do exactly the opposite. And this is just, we, we don't have to hook it up necessarily, but it has to have some kind of backwards solve functionality so that it appears in sequencer later. So let me go and uh, show you how I would do that. So you could, if you wanted to add other things to this, you would just go and add this, you copy these nodes and just uh, go hook these up and change these values appropriately until you have uh, as many morph targets hooked up as you like. So the backwards solve is the opposite of what we have here. So we would go and say set float value or set, set control float. And we're going to hook that up and we're going to set the smile control and we're going to go and set that from essentially like a get curve value so get curve value from which we say what curve are we getting we're getting the smile curve and then we're going to hook that up to uh, here almost i've forgotten that we divided earlier so we need to now multiply of course by 100 and then we hook that up to here. So that is our backward solve done. And you'd have to do that for every control you'd want to drive. Let me show you how we would use this inside a sequencer node here. If I go and uh, go over here, do I have something like this already in here? Do I? I do. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. So I'll go and, uh, and recreate this from scratch in a moment. But for now, I've got a small animation here that has these two control rigs here. I've got one for expressions and one for vizimes. And if I go and scroll through this, you can see that the sliders are all moving and they're all animated independently. And the way we would do that in 5.4, which is it's kind of cool, isn't it? I can do that plus a regular control rig for joint controls. And you just go and add all of them up and then just keep animating in bits and pieces. So very, very nice, I have to say. Very cool. So let me go and get Victoria out of the sequence here completely and start uh, from scratch with this um, setup. So with the figure, I would go and add her to the sequencer, first of all. And then I can go and add a control rig here. So asset-based control rig. Oh, I also want to do layered here. Asset-based control rig. So I'm going to go and use the Vizims first that will provide this control rig. And now I can go and animate that. So Vizims, maybe just go and put zero here. And then at, at frame 30, you'll have uh, any of these controls that you find are a good match. So maybe, maybe, whoops, not, not quite so much. Oh yeah. Uh, it's a slight inconsistency with animating in sequencer versus what we've seen here 
on the control rig in the control rig VM panel, whatever it's called. Uh, where here I could literally have a sliding control value. The sequencer doesn't allow you to do that for some reason. It only switches these to full whack or to nothing. There's nothing you can put in between. I don't really know why that is. So once animated, and this one's obviously got a, got a higher than it should have value, you can go and change this uh, number here to something less. So I want to maybe just animate that to here and then it does it. But I don't know why it only goes to one and to zero and not to anything or to full to 100% and to zero. I don't know why that, um, why that happens. I, I don't know but that's just how the cookie crumbles. So anyway, these are the seams here on that side. And if I wanted to have something else like forward IK rig or ground control rig or something else that drives other aspects of the figure, I'll go back here to the figure. And now I can add another control rig. This, we couldn't do this in 5.3. Once you have one control rig on there, this, this option isn't there. So now in 5.4, we can go control rig and then say uh, expressions here expressions goes on the other side. And now I've got a different control rig that I can also animate on top of that. So maybe I can, uh, at this point here, let's say that is zero. And then maybe a few frames later, I want that to, I want her to something, do something like a smile perhaps, like, or, you know, be unhappy. That's nice. So now we have unhappiness plus the seams. And then we can go on, let's say this is zero here again. And I can also overlay them. So I can have maybe this, uh, that's maybe a little bit too crazy. Maybe this here, yeah, that's just as crazy, but that'll be fine. And then I can go and animate other controls on top of that. So these are the seams here. And then I have to just go and make that a little bit lower. And then I can go and animate all these things on top of one another. And I'm thinking that's a really, really cool feature. So now you know how to do that. And as I said, it works with anything that has a morph target. So not just DAS figures, of course, but uh, anything that has a morph target. So. That is how you do that. If you do have any questions, don't ask me because I've only just found out about this. But if you have any more info about this or any more tips and tricks, do let me know. As I will, if I figure out more stuff, I will, of course, let you know how to do it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.